So one of the tools we recommend that you get is a birth ball. A birth ball is simply an exercise ball. I um, have had this birth ball that I'm sitting on for two out of my three pregnancies and now it's turned into a favorite toy of my children. So needless to say, we love our birth balls. The benefits of having a birth ball in labor is that it's actually been shown in randomized trials to decrease your level of pain during labor. It can help you assume several different comfortable positions during labor, not only sitting and bouncing and kind of, you can also roll your hips or move from side to side, but also you can get on your knees and lean or drape your upper body over the birth ball. You can also sit on the birth ball and lean forward onto a couch or a hospital bed. So it can really help with positioning during your birthing process. Um, so some people think they don't need a birth ball because most hospitals provide them now, but I would recommend that you get one for use during pregnancy for a couple of reasons. One, it's good to practice using the birth ball during pregnancy. It's also very comfortable for your back to have the birth ball to sit on instead of a regular chair. And even if your hospital provides one for you, most people are instructed not to go to the hospital until later in their birthing time. So this way you can have one at home for you to use during your early birthing time. Now there's a couple of options for getting a birth ball. You can borrow one from a friend. They're easy to clean with um, any kind of sanitizing wipes. And I know my sister, for example, always borrowed mine from me when she got pregnant. Or you can get one at any major retail store. Um, they typically sell for about $20 and you can purchase them in person or online. You want to make sure that it comes with a pump and you also want to make sure that it is burst resistant because for obvious reasons you don't want the birth ball to burst while you're sitting on it in labor. I'll list some sizing recommendations here but birth balls or fitness balls tend to come in three different sizes so you want to look for the one that fits your height. So I am currently sitting on a 65 centimeter ball and you can see it's a little bit short for me. It probably needs to be inflated just a little bit. You're looking for about a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here. So if I was able to inflate this a little bit, it would probably be just right for me. You can tell that here is a 55 centimeter ball. This would be obviously too short for me. Um, I would be too low um, with this one. And then I also have a 75 centimeter ball. This one, if I sat on it, would be too high for me. So you were looking for the correct size for your height. So when you get a birth ball, the first thing you wanna do is inflate the birth ball. And typically, if you, if you have a partner, I encourage the partner to kind of take over the maintenance and inflation of the birth ball. It kind of takes one thing away from the pregnant person's mind. So with the birth ball, you wanna inflate it when you get it, let it sit overnight, and then inflate it again a little bit more the next day because it's got to stretch out a little bit. You're going to want to keep it inflated throughout the rest of your pregnancy. So once it starts feeling a little bit softer, you can inflate it again. So you just want to make sure you don't lose the pump. So that's it for our lesson on birth balls. And I hope you're able to find one and that you find it comfortable for both pregnancy and labor.